purchasing Birmingham City. Mm -hmm. I think we've just got to start with this. We've spoken a lot over the years about Americans getting into English football. And Lisa and I were talking about how many leagues there are in the United Kingdom. Why this league and why this club? And if you were thinking of all of these clubs as opportunities to invest in, what was it about something of this size and this location that got your attention? Well, after a year of really looking at the landscape of English football, we were drawn to Birmingham for a number of reasons. England's second city, one of the youngest, most diverse populations in all of Europe. It's a city on the rise that is going through a significant transformation. So all of that made the city of Birmingham quite attractive. Uh, and then add to that a team that had been uh, underinvested in for a long period of time. And, and frankly, to us, seemed quite a bit like a sleeping giant. You know, it, it seemed impossible to us that you have the second city in England with the named team in the championship. And so we felt that there was a huge opportunity to really make a difference. As you know, that league is highly competitive very, very difficult to get promoted because you also have to face the teams that got relegated from the Premiership sure. who have got all the money to try and get back up a league. So why this league? That's what I'm trying to get my head around. When we think about the lower leagues of English football, a lot of Americans have been introduced to Wrexham and what Ryan Reynolds is up to. Lower league club, maybe you get a little bit more, more, bit more bang for your buck, you get that promotion, you get some more. Right. Why this team in this league? Well, it's a team that had been in the middle of the table for a significant period of time. And we felt that there were substantial resources available. And by the way, this isn't just about the men's first team. We have a spectacular academy. We have a women's team that we think is poised to be, you know, one of the best in England. And I think when you when you take all those things together, coupled with a very large natural fan base, we just felt that the team was underperforming, meaning the club itself was underperforming from the perspective of treating the fans properly, being a real part of the community, and embracing this incredible natural fan base that it has within Birmingham. So if, if we provide a product that is actually commensurate with the value of the city, we think that there'll be great things ahead for the club, you know, and beyond. So I know you from a previous life when you focused on distressed opportunities and you came in here and you said not distressed opportunities, turnaround situations, <laughs> yeah. which is applicable yeah. to this. And I'm wondering at a time where there is so much interest in investing in sports and mm -hmm. football, if this is the playbook more people are fi following as Middle East money kind of pushes everybody out of the top leagues. Well, I think that when you look at the investment from sovereigns, there it's very difficult to compete in the the highest level of the top tier in football. Um, but there's an enormous opportunity to compete in you know everything else within within football across all of Europe, frankly. Uh, but I think English football was particularly appealing to us for the reasons I cited earlier. I mean, it's a it, it was really very much about Birmingham and what we believed was a city that was going through a significant transformation. We felt that the, the club could play a big part of that. You've taken a 45 percent stake alongside Tom Brady. Lisa and I were talking about this. Is Brady just along for the ride for branding? Has he put real money into this venture alongside you? Yeah, he is not here for promotional purposes. And obviously today is all about, you know, having Tom uh, be very visible. But really what it's about is Tom bringing his expertise following a 23-year career in the NFL, which is highly competitive, as everyone knows, where he had unparalleled success. I mean, it's if you think about the fact that Tom played in 10 Super Bowls in a 23-year career, won seven of them, um, was only you know, favored, I think, twice, if I remember correctly, uh, in those Super Bowls. That's a pretty incredible track record. And his, his level of ex excellence never really tapered off. So it's about bringing those learnings to Birmingham. And so Tom will chair our advisory board. He will have a significant role in health, wellness, nutrition, you know, effectively human sustainability, um, and will play a role in how we think about uh, player interaction. So will we get to watch what it means to have human sustainability on a Netflix series that's coming out shortly? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I think, you know, those things would be uh, fun and exciting, but our, our principal objective is to really bring what worked for Tom and, and having known him for a long time and witnessed firsthand what went into his, his success over a long period of time, you know, this is, these are legitimate um, uh, activities that really do play out in a positive way and how, and how our athlete performs. We can't just let we'll see hang there. We've got to dig a little bit deeper. Are there talks with anyone currently about doing something on the media side? I think, you know, if you look at Birmingham, there, there's one individual that I think really 
stands out um, as, as it relates to producing fantastic content, and that's Stephen Knight. So if we were to do anything along those lines, we'd have to engage with Mr. Knight and see whether or not he were interested. So he's a wonderful guy. He's produced some and, and created some amazing content over the years. So it'd be really exciting if something like that could it happen. Raise the question as to whether when you came up with the appropriate price to play for this, whether content was something you were thinking about at the same time in the same way Liberty Media did with, say, Formula One. Was that a consideration? It, yeah, everything is a consideration, right? And it starts with what is the product that we're delivering to the fans? It has to be something that is worthy of, uh, you know, the city, the people, the fan base and their passions. And, and when we went to uh, our first game, it was not consistent with what we felt the fans deserved. So that will that will be the beginning point, right? It's it's about an overall experience, and that experience goes beyond just match day. You, you want to provide content, you want to provide enjoyment to the fans all the time, so that they really feel a part of the team and they can be proud to support the team. And ultimately, part of that is drawing in fans from beyond simply Birmingham. I mean, I think Tom's involvement brings in a lot of attention. Having undefeated as our kit sponsor on the men's and women's team. First time the same sponsor has been on both uh, the men's and women's jerseys. Doing that, so we have this connection with an LA-based streetwear brand. These are different things. It brings a level of attention to the club that I think is, is demonstrative of how we're going to approach this, which is to do things differently. Is the monetization going to come more from the content and the branding of it or the actual ticket sales, right? Is the idea sort of the larger thrust All of, of the it. team? All of it. It's got, it, you can't do, I think in sport today, you can't be successful doing one thing properly. You have to do everything properly. And this is a business, you know, to some degree. It's obviously one that has a lot of passion behind it. But we have to think about, as you would in any business, getting every element of the business right. So we have to think about promotion. We have to think about the product that we put out. Not just, again, not just the tickets and the product on the pitch, but also what's available for the fans. Do they like the kit that they're able to buy? Are there good pieces of swag that they, they would enjoy wearing, right? All of those things matter. And then you can think about partnerships and obviously commercial partnerships here will be critically important. And we're looking for the right commercial partners to, to begin this journey with us. I promise that corporations that step up and, and become a partner with us will have a long ride that they won't regret. It's early days. Let's talk about defining success. Have you seen that success already through season ticket sales picking up ahead of the oh new gosh. season? Absolutely. It's been... Is it a multiple of this previous year? It's... Well, we, we're... The stadium capacity is what it is, but we are well ahead of where we've been in prior years. We're going to increase stadium capacity by roughly 50% um, with some repairs that had been long needed. So we'll open a substantial number of additional seats. There's safe standing that's going in, which is something that the fans really want. Um, there'll be much better hospitality. I think everything in that regard will, will increase. But ultimately, the goal will be to, you know, keep people coming back. And that, and that means that the match day experience has to be enjoyable. And I think we'll measure success based on, you know, can we make continued improvement? I mean, everyone would love to see a spectacular season right out of the gates. Um, I think we have a team that's perfectly capable of doing that. But ultimately, it's about, you know, keeping our eye focused on the long goals, which is consistency. So let's do this. Let's agree now. I'll get a camera. You get Brady. And we'll go down to St. Andrews in the new season and we'll do a bit of content ourselves. That would be cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> That'd be great. Absolutely. We'll That'd be great. Happen. I would love to see that. Thing. Let's yeah. do that. <laughs> It'd be fantastic. Very cool. Tom Wagner, thank you. And good luck for the new season.